Investors are eagerly awaiting NVIDIA earnings after the bell tomorrow. The chip maker blew away estimates in its last report. We'll see if they can do the same here. The stock sits up over 200% so far this year. But is more growth still to come? Yahoo Finance's Jared Blickery, he's joining us live in living color from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Hey, Jared. Hey, just enjoying the Technicolor here. Got to talk about NVIDIA. Is it encroaching on Tesla as one of the top stocks in the uh, universe? One of the big sentiment indicators, Apple already in that group, and NVIDIA giving Tesla a run for its money. Uh, just in terms of expectations, uh, bets, and we're looking at the options market. $100 billion has been placed so far on NVIDIA in the options market, second only to Tesla this year. Um, and then you take a look at what's happened, not only in the options market, but the underlying as well. The last earnings report, they were up $184 billion in one day. And I got a tweet here from Jim Bianco about how important NVIDIA is becoming to the overall market, the S&P 500. So he's saying yesterday the S&P 500 was up 7 tenths of 1%. And then of that, NVIDIA was responsible for 34% or one third. Tesla was responsible for 19% or one fifth. And then the entire Magnificent Seven, all those big mega caps, 94%. And then the other 493, 6%. So arguably, NVIDIA just uh, gangbusters here. If I can go to the Wi-Fi Interactive for a second, I'll plot the year to date. Uh, over the last two sessions, uh, we have really just climbed right back up to this consolidation highs here. And if we get a gangbuster report tomorrow, you can bet we're going to just surge above that. And if not, I wouldn't be surprised to see 400 back in play. Oh, interesting stuff. Um, we are also, uh, Jared, tracking China stocks, which are seeing a bounce back today. Um, what can you tell us there and how sort of significant is that? Well, first of all, stocks are bouncing back a little bit. If we go to the if we go to the Wi-Fi Interactive, I will chart the Hang Sen. And over the last seven days, uh, this is actually overnight. You can see we got this big spike here right after the lunch hour, after traders resumed trading. Uh, that was largely unexplained. But over the last seven days, you can still see uh, down almost seven percent in the bottom end of the range. There, I'm going to call this an oversold bounce. I don't think this has a lot of significance for stock traders, but there's a lot of other things that are happening with respect to the Chinese economy and that are being done by the monetary authorities to stimulate invest uh, to stimulate the property markets there and to stop what they perceive as a deflationary spiral. Now, if I go to a chart of the Chinese yuan, we're going to see that it has actually been weakening quite a bit. Um, this is over the last three months, and we are right back up to these highs. The government fixed overnight the rate at 7.2%. It's right back up to 7.3%. That disparity where they're trying to take it a little bit stronger is the biggest since Bloomberg started covering this data in 2018. The point is uh, the government cannot have a runaway UN uh, just weakening and weakening because that promotes capital outflows. They don't want to lose all, their, uh, all the dollars in their currency. So they're making it more expensive to bet against the UN along with other measures. But these are only piecemeal put together. Are they going to do the job? We're going to have to see you guys. Yes, we will. Thanks so much, Jared.